So after contact with the traders from the period of time when the Oxmucknik started to become more and more dependent on the trade goods and less dependent on the environment to provide a lot of changes took place where with a lot of the miners that moved into the area, the settlers, the, the military, the, all of the different things that were starting to come in. The buffalo disappeared. The, everything that was happening, it created a, a very difficult time for the Alsmucknik. It was difficult to to survive, it was difficult to find things to eat, it was difficult to provide for themselves. And by the time 1855 rolled around, when Governor Stevens moved into the area, he came into the area to sign treaties with the tribes, and he wanted to form the reservations. The ideas between the two, the two cultural worldviews were were vastly different. What I was describing before of the worldview where the Alksmuknik thought of themselves as the youngest brother of all of creation and carried themselves in this universe that way and thought of themselves in a way that where they respected everything that was here because we survive only because of everything that is here. That's the way, that's the worldview that they carried themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, the, the Western worldview that Governor Stevens was trying to promote, the important part of it was property ownership, owning the land. And the idea that you could own part of the earth that was here before us and will always be here and will be here long after we're gone. That idea was totally foreign to the to the Aksmaknik. So that point of property ownership produced some of the largest misunderstanding between the two cultures, between the two worldviews. Now when the Kootenai chief came down to Council Grove to the treaty negotiations. The important, the important thing to him for the survival of his people was to be able to continue on to go where he wanted to go, to go and gather th throughout the territory, go and gather all of the foods and the medicines and to do all of the traditional practices that they had always done and to survive in the, in, in the same way that they always had. Their travel was, start, was being restricted and everything at that point. And so what he wanted to do was to make sure that, you know, he establishes that, that part of it, that right. And the other part in concession, he was willing to say, okay, then you go ahead and say you own, you know, you own the land, you own the, the the trees you own, the rivers you, you Go ahead and say you own the land. As long as we can continue to do what we always have done, and you can do what you want to do, and if we, as long as we coexist in peace together, and you stop killing us, then, then it can work. And that was, the, that was the view that he brought to the treaty negotiations. Well, the during those days here, they counted on interpreters. And interpreters were always made fun of in, from the traditional viewpoint because they spoke the language imperfectly. They, they didn't convey exactly, they didn't use the right words to convey exactly what was being said. And from the English perspective, they did the same. You know, they, they didn't communicate the English exactly either. So all of the tribes were in a difficult position in the, in the negotiation process. 
Well, what Michel brought to the treaty negotiations when, when he wanted to maintain the right to travel throughout the Aboriginal territory and to continue to do all of the things that we've always done, that, that became included. He, he, he stuck to that. He stuck to insisting upon that and, and, it, and it became included as part of the Hellgate Treaty was that the tribes would retain the right to, to travel and to gather and to hunt and to fish and to do all of their traditional practices in all of their Aboriginal territory. And that was a, that, that, that was a huge a huge part of the treaty that has very significant impact on us today. The, um, you know, as afterwards, when the state of Montana became um, formed and, and that treaty became an important document to go back to and to say, you know, but this agreement precedes the state of Montana. This agreement is between the United States and uh, the Salish and Kootenai tribes, and these are the rights that we have to maintain. These are the rights that are established in that treaty. So it, it became very, very significant, very important. 